Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nano Lives at John. Our main your host, Chad, if you're A333 or Dominic, depending on whether you're watching on YouTube or Twitch. I keep it on YouTube as Shadow Fury because I figure people are going to search that for historical reasons. It seems like the thing to keep for legacy purposes. But yeah, Twitch is now Dominic. Because it means it's more professional, easier to sell. Eh, whatever. Anyway, moving on. We have Randy and Gota on dual icy run. Let's get going! Randy going for the light vehicle factory at Rover Assembly. Gota going for tanks, which they have been going for quite a bit. We saw in the tournament last week they did tanks fairly often. So no surprises there, but still an interesting choice. Why does this keep happening? Anyway, yeah, so this is going to be... Like I said, Randy... Randy going for early fences right off the bat, not even going for a whole lot of Scorchers or anything. Which on this map kind of makes sense if you want to push forward. This is a large map and Scorchers, they're going to take a little while to get from one side to the other. Although even then... I think it's more just because like, where, are you, where are you going to put a Scorcher? Where are you going to push when you have this spread out metal extractor set up? Or at the very least, are you going to push? And it looks like that is what Randy's not doing. They just want defenses. On the other hand, Gorda is being very aggressive, going out very early with the welders, which I should point out have been buffed recently quite a bit. Like, they're essentially the... Not quite the raider, but they're able to defend themselves reasonably well. I mean, they're dealing 18 dam well, 90 damage a second, which is enough to get rid of a Scorcher in a couple seconds. Like, by the time that happens, the Scorcher might have dealt 100 damage, maybe, on a, on a 2,000 health unit. Not a big deal. So with that, Gorda definitely starting out quite strong, quite aggressively. While Randy, on the other hand, just trying to make sure that they don't get hit back. <laughs> Orphelia's trying to convince me to name myself Raven Fury again, as they've done consistently since the Shadow, the Bomber for the Air Factory and Zero K was renamed to the Raven. Because apparently other casters are there as people who have names that are animals. Yeah, it's a little late for that now. That's just, don't worry about it. Anyway, Randy, on the other hand, is worrying a little bit about their economy and managing to get that built up reasonably quickly. While Gota, on the other hand, they have metal extractors they can easily take, this one over in the northwest being a prime example, but they aren't doing that really, and at the same time, the southeast is also being locked down in a way that they could continue to build up in the back, they just haven't done so yet. I suppose considering that they have yet to build any military units, I mean, they have their workers and that's it, I guess it kind of explains why. Well, on the other hand, Randy is just, again, building up. Like Neither of them have really wanted to push forward because this map being what it is, and the players playing the factors that they are, it's kind of hard for Scorchers to get in on the welders, and it's kind of hard for the welders to really do anything forward since they're slow units. I mean, they don't have that much damage. So overall, both players just really building up to the mid-game. And I say that as Randy is actually now building a bunch of Scorchers. So that's where it's going to be interesting. So we have the Scorchers coming in here, and that is likely to lead to a fencer push on top of the Scorchers, on top of the raiding. I mean, they have enough Q. I mean, it's, I know it says 100, but it's probably just going to be for any number. And yeah, this is this is bizarre. It's just weird. We've had two games today where it's been really slow. It started out as being just this this plodding little pace where not much is happening for the first couple minutes and then it moves on. I mean, this is not what normally 0k is like. Normally, normally it's going to be much more aggressive. You have raiders early on, but it seems like raiders have fallen a little bit out of favor. Granted, the welder does make that harder to do. It is harder to just raid in when you're trying to deal with that. So I can kind of see it, but still, this is, this is making StarCraft look super fast-paced early game. So with that... Though, Randy finally now managing to get some aggression in here and managing to finally get some fences in here as well. And that is going to be... Well, that's a strong fencer push. That's what's going forward. I mean, Randy should actually be able to do a lot of damage with that. There is not a whole lot of defenses. Certainly not enough defenses that are going to outrange the fencers as the fencers are pushing in and managing to take out most everything that Golda has built up thus far. So really, Golda just trying to build up, rapidly getting a Minotaur up. 
Not sure that's going to be the right option. I would say Fencers counter Minotaurs, but at the same time, the Fencers are distracted, and there aren't very many of them. And the Scorchers are also distracted, so they can't go and help out and get rid of the Minotaur, which they'd also be very effective at doing. So at this point, no, the Minotaur are managing to, thanks to some positioning, get that kill, get those set of kills, and put themselves in a strong spot to possibly get rid of Randy's Commander, which I don't think they'll be able to do, as they don't seem to be focusing on it. They're much more focused on just getting past the Commander. But now the Scorchers are here, and now this is where I'd figure that the Minotaur would go down. Because the Scorchers... Fast raiding units that deal a huge amount of damage up close are going to be the death of the Minotaur. And with that, the Minotaur goes down, and there's not a whole lot saving Golda's forces yet. Another Minotaur is here, but the Scorchers now in position means that far less damage will be dealt by the Minotaur. As the Scorchers coming in here are just kind of ripped to shreds. The Minotaur does manage to get some kills in, but it's just easy for it to overkill these Scorchers, and that's no good if you're trying to get rid of them. Leading Randy to tear apart pretty much everything down to the main base. The Ogre up here, that is an answer. That will get rid of the Scorchers. Scorchers will be able to do a fair bit of damage in the process, but the Ogre will manage to just barely take it. But that is close. I mean, with that, Golda has a bit of room to push back into the map, but the problem for them is that Randy used that entire time, the entire push time, to expand behind it. Because that's what you do. I mean, a really good idea there. Honestly, that's, like I said, that's what you do. But that's the thing. They, didn't, they did that. So well done, you. It's just a matter of how you make that really work. And I don't see it. Not for Golda, at least. Like, how does Golda push back? And I think the thing to do at this point is just to not worry about it too much. Just... Just build up. Try to rebuild some metal extractors. Use the ogres and minotaurs. Like, use the ogres to get rid of the, or the scorchers and the minotaurs to push forward. Randy has expanded behind this, but they haven't really expanded that... It, that defensively. They have this line of defenses, and that's it. And I think Golden knows this. No, they don't. They only have right on the south side of the map, so they don't actually know this. Hmm. And still, the reclaim coming in here is something, so they have they have a good 800 metal reclaim to work with, but not compared to what Randy has. Like, Randy's static economy is still way better than Golda's with reclaim. Like, a 10 metal per second advantage is considerable. And now that Randy is building up this giant defensive line, it's getting even harder for Golda to set this up. And now another Minotaur, not dead, but forced to retreat. A welder is coming forward that will be able to help repair the Minotaur, but even then, that's only so much. That is only so much that can do. So at this point, I'm not sure what to really expect from Golda. They're rebuilding pretty effectively. They're getting their metal back up. They're getting their economy back, or their expansions back up, and they have their ogres to stop these Scorchers, but of course that means more Fencers. Granted, the Minotaurs can deal with the Fencers in reasonable practice. What I really would want, like to see, however, is some Pillagers. Because this whole force here, this entire defensive line, which is a lot of what Randy is spending money on, is not right, is going to be Pillagers. Now you look at the defense value, Randy has 2,000, the total value, like, their army value is actually slightly worse than Gorda's. But their defenses are so high. And now, what the... I agree! I agree with Fieldthos of the game itself. What is going on? There's a tank factory proxied here. And they're... They're going for pillagers. I, they're the ones going for the pillagers that I think Golda should go for. Golda instead going for Goliaths. Which I don't totally agree with, both for their cost and for the fact that they're... They're something that the units built, built up so far by Randy can deal with. The Ogres are helping, I'll grant you. They're stopping the Scorchers from getting too close, but even with that, no, it just doesn't doesn't seem to make sense to me. And on top of that, with the Ravagers coming, which you can kind of expect... Actually, no, the Ravagers are fine. That's actually good for the Minotaur. That'll stop the Ogre. The Minotaur will deal with that. The Goliath will deal with that, but the number of Ravagers could still be a pro Sorry, Cyclops. They, they could deal with that, but the number of Ravagers could still be a problem. And on top of that, Emissary, not Pillager anymore. Yeah, I thought I had the renames down, apparently no, but oh well. Oh, and Ophelia's pointing out in the chat that this is actually something that you'd normally do with Amphib, or they were doing with Amphib, where you'd push with Fencer, get the middle of the map, and then switch to Grizzly behind it, and then use the Grizzly push to win the game. Which is interesting, but I don't know... I mean, I, clearly it's not being done here. I do know how well that would work. That'd be extremely effective. Grizzlies are a terrifying unit. 
Especially for their cost. Like, they're a half strider, they're a demi strider, but they're actually really good for that. However, yeah, the pillager coming in here with the Cyclops. The Cyclops should be able to push through this. In fact, the Cyclops Minotaur combined should push through this, and I realized the point of the Cyclops is really just to get through the Stinger. Although, then again, I mean, there it is. Making life somewhat miserable for the Ravagers. Not miserable enough, though, as the, as the Cyclops does get down to about half HP without getting any kills. Finally managing to get a kill. Finally managing to get a bit of damage onto that Stinger. But even then, the Stinger still able to do so much damage. On top of that, the forces of Randy coming in around the front, that is still enough. The Ogres are at least managing to keep Gota in this game, but Gota is still pushed back, unable to gain ground with that attack, and unable to get rid of the Stinger either, nearly losing the Cyclops. Thankfully for them, they do have the Welders here that are helping. They're getting the repair in, but when you have the Emissaries on the other side doing their absolute level best to level everything, it's a little tough to keep this army going. Thankfully for the Welders, none of them have died thus far. It's been a bit lucky, honestly. But yeah, getting rid of the Stingers, that's going to be the key thing. If those can be destroyed, then there's a chance. And again, if Gorda built some Emissaries, they could get rid of the Stinger. I mean, Stinger range is kind of ridiculous, actually. Yeah, almost 1,200 range. Stingers are 600. They got twice the range of Stingers. One Emissary would tear apart this entire defensive line, no problem. I'm actually a little surprised they aren't just shifting the 700 metal for that, but no, they aren't. Be one fewer Minotaur, but I don't think the Minotaur is going to do much good. Goliath, however, or sorry, the Cyclops, however, is managing to do a fair bit, thanks for that Slowbeam. Slowbeam, definitely necessary to make sure that that Stinger did die, but that Stinger did die, and that does open things up, because now there is no defense that's able to block the lower side of the map. There was before, because the way the Stinger was, it was here, that... That's now opened everything up. Now Golda can break back into this match. But the question is, are they going to manage to get much value off that? As the Welders are not repairing the, the Cyclops. And the Cyclops is, what, like two, yeah, 1600 damage. One good lucky Emissary hit will finish it off. But at this point, the Welders, are they really, Golda, are you seriously raiding with Welders? Actually, granted, considering the Emissaries don't have a whole lot of close damage, or close range damage, that's not a terrible idea. Especially with the Stardust being built on top of that. This is actually interesting. I don't know if I call it brilliant because the emissary, sorry, the Minotaur is making that a bit of a problem, but hey, the repair, that's making it work. Minotaur's not able to survive this with the Stardust right next to the factory. That factory's going to go down in an instant. This is actually pretty brilliant, all things considered. So Gota managed to get rid of the proxy factory, locking the commander behind a wall of defenses so they can't really move either way. I mean, granted, the defenses might go down, but that's fine. And that's enough to push Randy to throw the towel and go to take him with a clever little push around the back with defenses. I have never seen that done before. Amazingly done, but very novel. So that is... Okay, so yeah, if you ever deal with this kind of defensive line, just break a hole in it, go around the back and build your own defenses when you're playing tanks. Because welders... Welders can do that now. They have the defense, they have the attack, they have the HP, more importantly. And they have 7.5 build power, which I believe is an upgrade from 5. So, you've got a lot to work with. Oh, Orphelia's pointing out that usually people use it with convicts. Fair enough, convicts have the shields, they can make that work. And usually you do send convicts forward in order to go with your felons and generally your thuggle bull. But, for tanks, never seen it done with tanks. Actually, I've never seen it done, period. But especially that wraparound of the tanks, the, the higher mobility on the welder does mean they can do that the way they just did. But yeah, normally you wouldn't have welders up front. Convicts and welders now the only real builders you'd have near the front lines. But hey, nicely done. So that is going to be going to take in the match. And I think... I think that's going to be it for me today. I mean, it's been three. I usually like to do three. So this point... Actually, no, I'll do one more. Because I realized that both the people who are involved in this match are actually watching right now. So we're going to do a match between Steel Blue and Orphelius on Red Comet. So that'll be up... Oh, I forgot I did that. So yeah, that'll be up in a couple minutes. Hopefully it turns out that's not a map that or match that's really bad. Because it's a really cool coincidence. But yeah. We have that starting in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.